Hello and welcome to Not Just a Geek. My name is Peter and uh, this video is going to be looking at our far infrared heating system and the stats from December and January of 2022 to 2023. I thought I'd start off by showing you the energy use by different energy sources against temperature. So the bottom graph shows the outdoor temperature at our house and the top graph shows where the energy came from. Uh, you can see the large dip in early December and the corresponding ramp up in peak energy uses as a consequence. And there's a similar but smaller increment uh, in January when there's a cold spot there. But on average, the climb is fairly linear. So looking at the stats for the month. So our heating energy source comparison for December. So we use 745 kilowatt hours of heat or electricity for heat. Um, of this, most of it came from peak energy at 397.15 kilowatt hours, uh, followed by off peak at 192.94 kilowatt hours, and then 110 kilowatt hours came from the batteries, and 44 kilowatt hours came from solar. This heating led to uh, some carbon emissions. So a gas boiler would have been 215 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. Uh, but actually, we found that for the infrared, we averaged about 179.8 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour, uh, which is slightly lower than the grid average for the month of 191.2 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. We then move into January. So January was clearly a milder month than December and missed the uh, unpleasantly cool minus 10 long spell at the beginning of the month. Uh, here we have 285 kilowatt hours in total for heating, 244 of which came from peak, 155 from off peak, 157 from the battery, and 44 ish from solar. So the emissions for this month are particularly good. Uh, clearly, it was quite a windy month. Um, the grid averaged 144 grams per kilowatt hour, and uh, the far infrared helped by the solar averaged 133.6 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. Uh, it should be noted that you'll see this later in the video, but we found that we'd need roughly double the number of kilowatt hours for gas heating versus fire and fred heating in our property for the same level of comfort. So while the gas here is listed as 215 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour, actually realistically, for the same level of comfort, uh, we could double that. So if we were looking at the fire and fred energy uh, usage, we could double the number of kilowatt hours for gas and so therefore treat the gas as double the dirtiness as it were. Okay, so to compare our electrical and gas heating, we did the following. So if we look at our gas data here, so this is the data day by day from the 1st of November 2021 all the way to the end of March 2022. And we've taken that and combined it with the degree days delta um, temperature. So uh, this is the temperature assuming a certain temperature would require zero heating. So it's the difference between the required temperature for zero heating and the outdoor temperature. So the data came from this website here. Um, I've put in Paddington's postcode because why not? And actually the base temperature for our house is about 15 and a half degrees. If it's warmer than that outside, we don't really need any external heating. And the nice thing about this is it gives you a load of data, but it quite nicely takes out some of the spurious results that come from higher outdoor temperatures. And this seems to be used by quite a few people in forums as a consistent way of comparing data. So we've gone with that. Uh, but if you're interested, the relevant temperature is available in this temperature column here. So it's effectively the equivalent of uh, what you can see here. 15.5 uh, so the temperature we require to not need any heat. Take away the degree days delta is the actual temperature. Um, or if you were to invert it, so 15.5 take away temperature would give you the degrees day delta. Um, and that's then cor uh, mapped against the gas usage. So that gives us this graph here. And you can see there's a reasonably clean line um, following through this, a reasonably decent trend. And we have the kind of formula for that line, which we can use to forecast future data. So that's given us some gas data that we can work with and a formula we can use in our calculations. So now we need to look at the electrical side of this. So uh, this is the same again over here. So we have the date, uh, 1st of December 22, all the way to the end of January 23. 
uh, the degree days delta and the equivalent temperature as previously and the space heating uh, in kilowatt hours. So this is the total amount of energy needed on that day to heat the house to the, the temperatures that we find comfortable. Now, it's worth noting we've been experimenting with far infrared for a few years, and so as a consequence, um, we already were heating some of the rooms using far infrared last winter. And so we're excluding the energy those rooms use from our calculations, because otherwise it, it wouldn't fairly reflect what we did last year. And we don't have the same um, detail for logs for the far infrared heating last year, so I can't I can't add it onto the gas side, so we're taking it away from the electric side. So these four columns here um, are effectively uh, dead data. So um, they're rooms that we're subtracting away from the space heating. So if you have a look here, you can see that we've got uh, the adjusted space heating, which is uh, D column subtracting E through H. And so when we do our mapping, we're effectively using uh, this adjusted energy against the degree days uh, delta, which gives us this graph over here. Oops, silly thing. Um, and again, we have a, a useful little formula. So, what I thought would be useful now is to do the actual comparison between the two. So, let's take uh, the date, degree days, temperature, and space heating, and let's just, for the sake of simplicity, put them into um, a new sheet. Let's do right. So we'll do the forecast for the gas in kilowatt hours, um, and the formula was 2.24 times the degree days delta, so that's P2, plus 1.18. And let's double check that. So 2.24x. 1.18. Right, there we go. Right, uh, for reference, we have this one row here where there's no data. So, for reasons that I don't quite understand, there was an issue with the recording on data on that day. Um, I think it's because there was an update to Home Assistant and the sensor recorded data multiple times, uh, but effectively it implied that we'd used like 90 kilowatt hours of heat in that single day, which is uh, just not tenable. So, yeah, we've just scrubbed that record from the set so we don't have the uh, difficulty. So, if we look at this, what we're seeing is that um, generally the amount of energy required for space heating in electric, uh, so this would be the uh, red space heating column, uh, is less than the forecast gas. Uh, if we do E2 divided by D2, so we, we take the gas and divide it by the infrared heating, we get a kind of COP equivalent. So if we were to average that, uh, oops, TF, uh, only I've got a zero figure, which isn't, oh, there we go. So if we were to average that, we get a COP, which is almost equivalent to uh, COP. We get a COP, which is almost equivalent to two. So uh, this is far infrared heating. It's not using a heat pump. It's not using any particular efficiency systems, and yet it's achieving a COP of a roughly two when compared with natural gas. So there are several reasons for this. So one of them is just the fact that we're using a combustible fuel like gas. So we will never get 100% of the energy within that fuel out of it when we burn it. Now, as it happens, the boiler we were using was a five-year-old Worcester Bosch boiler. Um, it was a condensing boiler. We were running at a very low flow rate. Um, so we should have been achieving fairly high efficiencies, you know, with the return temperature was 50 degrees or quite often under. Um, so we should have been achieving decent efficiencies, but we won't have been at 100%, so that'll be part of it. Uh, part of it will be distribution losses within the home itself, um, but realistically, quite a lot of it will just be the fact that because it's zonal temperature heating and we can have it respond quickly, 
we can maintain background temperature in rooms at a lower temperature and have them turn on when we enter them. Uh, so this is true for the wet rooms, the kitchen, etc. Um, we can have quicker responsiveness at bedtime, so we don't have the heating on as much. Um, and we can also have the actual temperature while we're in the room lower. So last year when we were using gas, uh, the room temperature in the living room was about 19 degrees, maybe 19 and a half. Um, and actually, it wasn't comfortable in that room. Um, I can't quite describe why, but it was just very hard to be comfortable. You know, you'd have blankets and stuff at that temperature and still not feel quite right. Having said that, now we have the room at somewhere between 17 and a half and 18 degrees, and we are much more comfortable. And so actually that, that makes a difference in itself because it's reducing the delta between um, the amount of energy that is needed to heat the house, right, to combat the heat loss, um, which is related to the differential between the outdoor temperature and the target indoor temperature that will affect how much energy is needed. And so these things together, I think, are what give us this, this equivalent COP. It's not really a COP. Um, it's just a, because the environment is different, we don't need as much, much energy, but it equates to a COP when compared with a similar heating solution, right? So I guess the question is, how does pricing data compare? So let's give ourselves some uh, values. So, um, uh, so for us, we know this year that over those two months, electrical heating has worked out at around uh, 21 pence per kilowatt hour. Um, the gas would have been 10 pence a kilowatt hour. Uh, and so let's have a look at this. So uh, farm bread daily cost, um, gas daily cost. Uh, so this would be um, that one times that one. Uh, and this would be okay so what we can see here is that actually um, even with that COP because gas is so much cheaper than electricity on most days if not all days the gas will work out cheaper um, there are some exceptions of course but you know as an average so let's look at the, the total cost. So uh, total electric um, is the sum of the H column, isn't it? So, and the gas would have been the I column. So let's look here at the heating costs. So as you can see, the electric is more expensive than the gas. Um, but the difference between them is not particularly large. We're talking about £40, pounds, um, which is you know half the standing charge for gas over the course of a year. And realistically, this is the more extreme part of the year for heating for us. So uh, during the kind of edge nodes of the heating season, so uh, kind of March, April, February, November, October, um, our cost per unit of electrical heat will be much lower because solar and off-peak will make up a much greater proportion of energy, whereas due to that cold period in December and a similar one in January, we use more peak energy than we would be likely to do at those other parts of the season. Um, so, you know, I'm not particularly worried about this. And, you know, even if we go to the point where we go back to the energy prices of before, so I reckon we'll average about nine pence a kilowatt hour based on um, the off-peak nature of it, if we go back to the previous prices. Um, and gas was back at about three pence. So. At this point, we're still looking at roughly a £40 differential between the electric and the gas heating, but the actual cost itself is much, much lower. And so uh, I'm not too worried about this. So, so you might be asking, why did we go for fire infrared? Why didn't we go for a heat pump? And it's a valid question. The heat pump would have had a much higher cop than this. So we've got friends with a hydronic heat pump, so that's uh, air to water for reference, and their cop is 3.5 over the heating season, um, as low as 1.5 in really cold days, as high as kind of 5-ish, maybe on a, a particularly mild day. And uh, so, so their, their cost per unit heat is going to be lower than that, almost certainly. But the capital cost for the heat pump itself was much higher. So we had the installation of these infrared panels throughout the house for under £4,000. Um, the heat pump, uh, it 
an, an appropriate heat pump solution in the house would be well over double that, um, including grant with uh, a wet system or frankly just for an air to air system it would be double that without the grant. And actually that extra six grand we can put into other things. So we've chosen to use it in the short term to help us with energy storage, which will benefit us through the entire year, not just the heating season. Um, but, you know, longer term, we can put more into uh, insulating the property and improving the envelope, which will actually improve comfort all year round, not just in the winter. And realistically, there are some obvious wins that we can do. So uh, we have three windows and a door, which are currently single glazed and need upgrading. Um, and we put that off this year because we wanted to have a comparable house for comparing the gas and the electric. We wanted to, to see what the difference was and didn't want it to be influenced too much by other factors. But generally, it, it's pretty positive. Um, and another note to bear in mind here is actually, if anything, these figures are probably misleading in that uh, they imply a better performance for gas than there really is. So uh, this year we had a baby. Um, and so my wife has been on maternity leave and she's been at home pretty much all day, every day. Whereas when we were in the heating season last year, uh, you know, she was at work, I was at work, um, neither of us really worked from home particularly often. And so the gas was on significantly less often, um, which will have influenced all of this. So realistically, I, th I think it's fair to say that uh, if anything, this is making gas look more favourable than it possibly should be. I hope this is helpful. Um, if you've got any questions, please let me know. If I've made any obvious mistakes, then also let me know, because this isn't my bread and butter per se, but I'm hopefully getting along with it, okay? Uh, so there are some future videos coming. Uh, some of them will be exploring how you can do your own Mixergy style hot water tank. Um, I'm hoping to have that out in the next month or so. Um, looking at ways of improving automations for solar gain and what have you. So hopefully you'll subscribe and be wanting to see some of those in the future. Great, thanks. Bye.